Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Linux for Everyone. I am going to make a bold claim. Imagine for a moment, just a thought experiment. Imagine that 100% of a PC's purpose is just gaming. Let's say that 100% of Windows-only games were perfectly playable on Linux and with the same level of performance. Unfortunately, I still think that Windows would win the battle. Windows would still dominate the market share, still dominate the mind share. You've heard the phrase content is king, right? Well, ecosystem is the kingdom. And modern gamers are increasingly putting a lot of thought into what kingdom they want to occupy. PC gaming is becoming more and more about the entire ecosystem surrounding the games that we play. Let's chat about it. Through the lens of an enthusiast, Linux gaming is healthy. Valve and Codeweavers have boosted its profile significantly since introducing Proton, a compatibility solution that lets you play literally thousands of Windows-only games across dozens of Linux distributions. Ditto that for great services like Lutris, which employs Wine and these pre-configured scripts to make installing games from Epic, Origin, and Blizzard a mostly painless click-and-go affair. But one problem with Linux gaming has nothing to do with the actual games. I've been doing this professional tech journalism thing at Forbes for about eight years. And in that time, I have reviewed a closet full of graphics cards and PCs. I've covered dozens of hardware launches. I've talked to AMD and NVIDIA marketing people, software engineers. And over the last several years, I've seen consumers place a lot of importance over the complete package when they decide to purchase a new graphics card from AMD or NVIDIA. Gamers aren't merely looking at T-flops, clock speeds, pricing, and benchmark charts. They're savvy. They're evaluating the whole picture, G-Sync and FreeSync, the wealth of features offered by GeForce Experience and Radeon Adrenaline, the software companions to the hardware. In turn, AMD and NVIDIA have really answered the call, well, on Windows anyway, placing heavy emphasis on the development of those software suites and adding a wide range of quality of life enhancements and seriously useful features. Of course, when it comes to bringing this gaming tool chest to Linux, AMD and NVIDIA aren't even picking up the call. It's really disappointing when glancing at AMD, a company who contributes greatly to the open source ecosystem and whose CPU and GPU drivers are baked right into the Linux kernel. Now, yes, I'm a Linux advocate, but I believe in seeing how the other side lives from time to time. And that's both out of curiosity and to inform my professional coverage. So this week I reinstalled Windows 10 and I finally revisited AMD's Radeon Adrenaline software. To put it mildly, I was floored. A lot of desktop Linux users don't really know what they're missing, but we need to raise our voices and urge these companies to treat Linux like a first-class citizen, the same way that Lenovo has been doing recently. Radeon Adrenaline especially, it provides so many fun and practical features, I can't even scratch the surface in a single video. Suffice to say, just the main dashboard provides a nearly overwhelming amount of data and configuration options. You can see the last game you played and the average FPS you got, check your current driver status, glimpse your current GPU, VRAM, CPU, and memory usage, record a screenshot, create an instant GIF, or start recording a video, or even start streaming or uh, balance your audio settings. And that's just the main page. You dig deeper and you can auto overclock your Radeon GPU or undervolt it, set up multiple scenes for streaming, tweak the graphics profiles for individual games, set up custom power profiles for individual games. And I haven't even touched stuff like Radeon Chill, Radeon Anti-Lag or Image Sharpening, all of which offer enhancements under various gaming situations. Am I feeling intensely jealous right now? Yeah, a little bit. But this is not a pity party. This is a wake-up call. Everyone, myself included, who's screaming at the top of their lungs about how wonderful Linux gaming is. You know what? They're not wrong. But I think they're also avoiding an equally important issue. 
For Linux gaming to climb that next mountain and be taken more seriously, it needs a similar ecosystem, replete with these system-wide quality-of-life features that are available on Windows. These power user tweaks made easy, and don't at me about having any of these tools available from the command line, because 99% of gamers, they don't care. How do we get there, though? Do we raise our collective voices and campaign for AMD and NVIDIA to port these features? Or do we build them ourselves? I'm not the guy who has that answer, unfortunately, but I am the guy who's going to urge you to pay attention to the bigger picture, the entire ecosystem, not just game performance and Proton and Lutris and Wine. So many of us, we want Linux and by extension, Linux gaming to succeed and capture a larger audience. And I think this is an important part of that puzzle. The question I have for you guys is what are we going to do to put that puzzle together. Leave your feedback in the comments. Thanks as always for watching. Remember to subscribe and get some merch if you want over at the Linux for Everyone store. And I will see you guys for the next video. Until then, take care and take care of each other.